LeBron behind the back to Wade. Another big memory of mine was in the 2013 All-Star Game. I was on the West team at the time, and um, there were 16 seconds left in the game, and East called a timeout. The coaches came to a quick huddle. We were up two points, and we talked about who the best person would be on our team to guard LeBron James. He was in Cleveland at the time playing for the East, and we knew he was gonna get the last shot. NBA All-Star Game, there's no way that LeBron is not taking the shot. We all agreed Kevin Durant's the guy, put Kevin Durant on him. So we walk into the huddle and as we get to the huddle, Kobe Bryant looks up at us and he says, I don't know what you guys are talking about, but I'm guarding LeBron James and nobody is switching. He said, I am staying on him. James played by Bryant. 16 seconds to go, they inbounded the ball to LeBron James and Kobe Bryant was just right up underneath him, defending him. We ended up turning them over on that, that particular last play and coming up with the basketball and winning the game. But um, I'll forever remember how Kobe was focused, his leadership, just his passion for wanting the defensive stop in the final moment. He came through. He came through and I think it was a, a great lesson for our young players that were in the game at the time. Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook were also on the floor at the same time and they were all stars, but they watched Kobe, they watched the moment and we talked about that moment for a lot of years after that. My name is Rex Kalamian. I'm an assistant coach with the Detroit Pistons basketball team. I've been in the NBA now 28 years. I've worked for nine different teams. Started with the Clippers. I went to Denver as an assistant coach under George Carl. Then to Minnesota, I worked with Dwayne Casey as the head coach for a few years. Kevin Garnett's final years there in Minnesota. Then I went to Sacramento and then six years in Oklahoma City with the really good team of James Harden, Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook. From Oklahoma City, went to Toronto for three years. From Toronto to the Los Angeles Clippers where I worked for Doc Rivers. And then to Sacramento again under Luke Walton. And now to the Detroit Pistons where I'm working back with Dwayne Casey for the third time. My offensive philosophy uh, is to play in space, to play with the pass, to play fast, to play with freedom, and to have fun. I like to uh, enable the players to make great plays. For instance, giving them permission to make mistakes is allowable. NBA basketball is a game of mistakes, unfortunately. It's who can limit their mistakes usually wins at the end of the night, whether it's turnovers, fouls, blown defensive assignments. Um, there's a, a tremendous amount of mistakes made in an NBA game. So I think just kind of freeing your team up to play more instinctively uh, is important. Defensively, it's about putting pressure on the other team, putting pressure on the basketball, turning the other team over, speeding them up, maybe making them play at a pace that they're not comfortable playing at, you could certainly win a lot of games by putting pressure on the other team and, and making uh, people on the floor take the shots that you want them to take. So that's always been my philosophy. Some of my proudest moments um, in my career, I, I, they're obviously team moments. For me, 2012 playing in the NBA Finals, that team, that Oklahoma City team that, um, you know, we were so young with Kevin Russell and James, making it to the NBA Finals at, at that stage of their careers, those guys, uh, was impressive. And that was a big 
uh, moment in my career. People ask me all the time, and they say, do you ever think about, you know, 2012? When I said, think about it, I think about it every single day. Um, you know, for a very long, long time, I would wake up every morning thinking about what we could have done differently to try to win that series against LeBron and, and the Miami Heat. The biggest lesson that I've learned as a coach is communication. It's the number one, two, and three key of coaching, of leading, of bringing a team together. Honest communication, direct communication, frequent communication. Not only in practice or the games, but it's the communication outside of that. It's the communication on a day-to-day -day basis. It's a communication in the summertime. And it's something that I learned from a lot of different coaches, a lot of successful coaches, is the best teams, the best leaders are the, the teams and the best organizations are, are those that communicate well. Kevin Garnett was one of the fiercest competitors that I've ever been around and coached. He taught me as much as uh, you know I could probably ever teach him about competition, about inspiring people, about work habits, about consistency. My days in Oklahoma City with uh, Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, James Harden, all three of those guys today, we still communicate and um, share things throughout the season when I see them. and. DeMar DeRozan, I coached him, I became a friend. He's, he's an unbelievable person, unbelievable player. He's well liked by all coaches, players, the league. Um, Kawhi Leonard was one of my, one of my favorites uh, to be around, to work with. I tried to extract information on what made him so special defensively. And even now on our team, working with Cade Cunningham, the number one pick last year, and I think he's gonna be one of the leaders of the NBA as we move forward. My Armenian heritage, I have to speak about my grandmother, Yevgenia Yeramian. My grandmother was a genocide survivor. She described running and fleeing her house with no belongings, watching her family basically be massacred in front of her, seeing her pain, watching her cry. It hit home for me. It's something that you know I keep with me and have kept with me forever. I, I describe her as my hero because um, she taught us perseverance through her actions. She taught me resilience. She, she probably didn't, never knew the definition of the word, but she proved it by how she lived and how she stayed alive. I think that I have those qualities. I have her qualities of perseverance, of um, resiliency. It's helped me in my lifetime. It's helped me in my career. It's helped me as an NBA coach. is reconnecting with his roots. Rex Kalamian has worked as an assistant head coach in the NBA for 27 years. While currently working with the Pistons, Kalamian recently accepted the head coaching job for the Armenian national team. I accepted the job as the Armenian national team head coach, and I knew it was going to be a challenge. So all I knew was NBA basketball, and that's what I was teaching our team. They were tremendous at picking up the terminology and everything that we wanted to accomplish. So I, I give a, a lot of credit to our players that were able to come together and build the foundation of team over individuals in such a short amount of time. I think typically Armenia is known as a country that is better at individual sports. So having you know a team event like this, a FIBA event that um, we not only uh, participated in but you know won a gold medal in, I think it, it's, an, it's a great achievement for um, the Armenian Basketball Federation, the players, and Armenia itself. The NBA 
It's a very difficult league to get into, and I've been very fortunate. I've been blessed to be in a lot of very good situations and to have been around a lot of great people that have helped push me forward. I'm trying to now turn around and give that same gift that I've been given to Armenia, to basketball, to developing basketball in Armenia. Armenia's been through a, a couple of tough years, and the people there have had to endure a lot over the past couple of years. This, this win hopefully just gave them some, some hope and some good, good vibe for the moment. Well, I've been a career assistant for such a long time, and my main focus has always been to be the best assistant coach I could be for the head coach that I'm working for and for the organization. That's first and foremost. I think that uh, I would love the opportunity to be a head coach in this league. Um, I consider it an, an honor to hold one of those 30 positions. They're very difficult to get. I worked uh, closely with Nick Nurse, who's now the Raptors head coach, and um, we would have a lot of discussions uh, as we were both assistant coaches working under Dwayne Casey. I think as an assistant coach, you're always thinking about working for the head coach and how you would do things, and then also, if you were the head coach, how you would teach certain things. So Nick and I had a conversation one day about Bill Belichick and how did you know the team that eventually hired him, New England, who took a chance on him as his second job, how did they know as an assistant that he was going to be the, the offensive genius that he became? And he would always say, how do they know that one of us is not the next uh, Bill Belichick? He did just that with his team in, in Toronto winning the championship. Assistant Rex Kalamian, he was the acting head coach in Detroit's win over the Jazz. Here's how the guys celebrated him. This past season, coaching in Detroit uh, as the acting head coach when Coach Casey was out winning my first NBA game against the Utah Jazz. Such a fun, exciting night. We should be throwing water on you guys, though, honestly. Like, Amen. your effort, your execution, Amen. togetherness, spirit, it was amazing. So much fun very addicting to becoming a head coach for sure uh, feeling that that energy of, of being able to coach your team to to a win is really enjoyable 28 years as an assistant coach his first win as the guy running the show you gotta love how the pistons knew all that and ate it all up some rare access inside that pistons locker room but just to see how cool that young group came together carolyn and you gotta love a celebration like that oh yeah love the love with the pistons and with the lions yeah. great stuff brad